everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Always Open. I am your host, as always, Barbara Dunkelman, and joining me today are two of my wonderful friends, starting with Jessica Vasami. She's back. Hi. Welcome back, Jessica. Thanks for having me. And returning to Always Open, our very good friend, Gavin Free. All right. <laughs> Who may or may not shit himself at some point during this podcast. I will say, you two look like you haven't been up all night shitting, which <laughs> yeah. is really nice. That's nice. Thank you. Which is a, you look that great. Very big compliment. I yeah. know, right? You don't look like you've been up all night shitting. You maybe look like you've been <laughs> shitting a little bit. A little questionable. <laughs> what happened? Uh, I got food poisoning. Um, probably ate some bad meat. Yeah. Um, immediately started just coming out both ends. And now I'm on the liquid phase of where it could just water out at any time, at any moment. Okay. So if you do see a hard cut during this episode, it probably means if, you, if it just cuts to me and I'm really sweaty, we know what. <laughs> <laughs> Who did anyone else you were out to dinner with get food poisoning, or was it just you? No, and that might be the most annoying thing. <laughs> but it, when that happens, has that happened to you, Jessica? I've never gotten food poisoning. Thank God. <gasps> wow. How? I'm you also know, gonna knock on wood for you because it sucks. I mean, maybe I have, but it's only come out via diarrhea and not okay. throw up. So maybe I have, which is just a like form of food poisoning. Well, then po- possibly. Yeah. yeah, it is awful. Yeah, um, sounds it sounds like you're going through hell right now. Have you been able to keep anything down? I ate banana. Uh, okay, that's yeah. good. It's a good, interesting <laughs> first choice of food. Yeah. Why? Well, I'm trying to get stopped up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that yeah. how it works? You could take a modium. Apparently that. Mm. Stops diarrhea Does one of these instantly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Excuse me. laughs> Came out. Did not intend to come out. <laughs> Jesus. Well, I appreciate you being here to do the show, despite having oh, yeah. currently having food poisoning. Yeah, I wouldn't miss it for shit. <laughs> I mean, you could. I would I give could, you permission. Yeah. And Jessica, thank you for being here. Again, yeah, as you always. Know, what if I'm the one that has to take the shit during this? I tried not to, but I am drinking some caffeine. Mm, yeah, I, I'll allow it. Okay. Yeah. I think bathroom breaks are always allowed. We okay. don't need a hall pass Great. for this show. Cool. Um, so let's get into some icebreaker questions. I, I picked, I handpicked these ones Ooh. knowing that you two would be joining us today. Oh, shit. Um, because something that I love doing with both of you is these like hypothetical questions. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and something that I also want to do at some point. It's a video I sent to Gavin. Okay. It's my new favorite thing. I forget the name of the creator who does <clears throat> this. It's these two friends who make up names and then read them to each other. I saw it on your story the other day. It is yeah. like, I can't, I cannot get enough of it. That's and I hilarious. sent it to Gavin being like, this is your sense of humor right here. Yeah, I feel like I could combine my naming of worms from yeah, Achievement yeah. Hunter videos into that somehow. And you're like fake British slang yeah. stuff that you've done before. Yeah. I'm built for that, I feel like. Mm-hmm. British. All right, well, these are a bunch of <laughs> British. <laughs> these are a bunch of would you rather questions. Okay. So the first one, would you rather have everyone you know be able to read your thoughts or for everyone you know to have access to your internet history? Oh, internet history. Yeah. Well, I could control what's on that. Well, I can't control what I'm thinking right now, Barbara. <laughs> it's just pictures of shit. I know. I was like, it's just diarrhea. <laughs> it's it's just the toilet. <laughs> Nothing else. Oh, man. Yeah, I would that, pick the same. It'd yeah. be internet. I mean, granted, I would be, if I handed you my entire internet history, I'd be sweating balls. But like, right. there's my thoughts are anything and everything. What's the gnarliest shit on there right now? In on your my thoughts? internet history? Yeah. Hold on. Actually, let me see if I, I find something. Want, yeah, I. if I knew someone was going to be looking at it, it'd be different. But like... I guess, because I, I posed this question to Trevor too when I was writing these down to see what he would say on these two questions. And he's like, well, internet history, at least it's like somewhat tailored. Whereas your thoughts are just like going, yeah. going, going all the time. You can't necessarily control like a reaction to something. But some of your internet history or, or search yeah. terms are like a little fucked up sometimes. Yeah, that's really, there's really nothing there. The biggest thing I think is I'm currently, unfortunately watching Vanderpump Rules and one of the cast members, apparently his dick pic got out and i was like oh. well, i'm just curious this person's dick pic could you trying to see it. the dick pic yeah oh, okay yeah. so here mm-hmm. are some things in my recent search history on google uh cast of blackberry because we just okay. watched the movie yesterday okay uh our bratz dolls mattel <laughs> okay great i don't know why i had this one jack patillo birthday <laughs> <laughs> I forget why I was looking it up. Were you worried that you'd missed it? Well, I think it's, I was trying to figure out how old he was because we were talking about like the different generations at Rooster Teeth. Mm. 
and I was like, is Jack, I, I think I was thinking if he was a millennial or a, a, a Gen X. Uh, yeah. He's got to be early millennial, right? I think he's millennial. Yeah. Because he was like, I think it was like 83 or something like that. And I think millennial started in 80. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, he's technically that. Uh, <laughs> Lizzo. I don't know if you guys have heard about the yeah. recent yeah. Lizzo, Lizzo controversy. Yeah. So it's just like, I guess that's not too bad. One of them yeah. here is follicular phase of the menstrual cycle. <laughs> Because I got my blood taken recently. Oh, yeah. And she's like, when was this? I was like, after my period. And she's like, okay, for after your period, everything looks normal. And I was like, what does that mean? What does that mean? What's yeah. follicular? Follicule. It's the after, it's the beginning of your period to the time you ovulate. So uh, okay. so throughout your entire period and then those few days right before you ovulate. And when you're ovulating, that's like the best time to get pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. Or like the most, sure most uh, potential time to mm -hmm. get pregnant, like the most chances, essentially. And that's when the girls get horny. When you're like, oh, Meow. why is she on top of me? You're ovulating, aren't you? Yeah, like animals. <laughs> I also have heard, I don't know if you've seen this, Jessica, um, that apparently through the different phases of your cycle, like let's say it's broken out into like four different weeks, mm -hmm. your body basically like burns calories in a different way, has different types of energy levels. And there's this creator who makes an exercise program based on your cycle. So it's like Ooh. this week you should be doing like lower intensity things like yoga and walking. Mm -hmm. Whereas this week you'll have more energy and be burning more calories. So you should be doing cardio and weightlifting and like all these different things. And it's like tailored to your cycle. That makes sense because when I, uh, st like if I'm like on my first or second day of my period and I'm lifting weights, I there are some times where I just can't lift the same amount that yeah. I did the previous other days. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And, it's like you're weaker on your – I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I'm bleeding. But your whole you body know? is just falling apart. Yeah. yeah. So guys can just work out whatever they want whenever they feel like? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we can too. We just might not have the t same type of energy or strength certain times of the month because of old lady flow. Yep. <gasps> yep. Causing a stir. Or if, you know, you have food poisoning, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> Probably yeah. shouldn't lift anything <laughs> right now. No. Um, but yeah, I think internet her search oh, yeah. history, for sure. Yeah. Not thoughts. God, but both are bad. What about, <laughs> would you rather people be able to read your thoughts or would you rather be able to read everyone else's thoughts? Oh, Jesus. Because I feel like that would fuck me up real bad. I, oh, I wouldn't want anything to do with that. I don't want it either. I don't want... Like <clears throat> either way? I don't want anyone's no. business, yeah. especially for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. It would just depress me. It would. I, I think I would hurt my own feelings. Same. Be having that ability. Same. Or realize that everything I'm concerned about is actually just in my own head. True. If I could do that, if I was in a job where I'm like dealing with enemies or bad people, then I would. But <laughs> none of my friends, just enemies. Yeah. Because then to I would against shit. Them? Yeah, just to use against them. <laughs> what are you thinking right now? Okay, I think we're all on the same page. Let us know in the comments what you would prefer. Um, second question, would you rather, would you rather have universal respect or unlimited power? What does that mean, unlimited power? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just took the question oh from the internet. Okay. Uh, okay. No, you go. We well, yeah, I don't want power. No? Okay. I don't want power or control of anyone. What if anywhere. it was to do good? You know? Like, What's an example? Like... For example, the way the Supreme Court has power over what people could do with their own bodies and what laws uh, apply to some people, what rights some people don't have uh, as human beings. Yeah. Well, then I'd be the Supreme Court, would I, if I had power over them? You'd be the Supreme Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess like in terms of having unlimited power of being able to have people do what you want them to do. Yeah, I don't want that. Because then yeah. I would just be the op the opposite problem for everyone else. Like yeah. then people. Someone will... would always be unhappy, right? Yeah. Yeah. I w I'd... <laughs> I don't want to make <laughs> any decisions for anyone. Okay. <laughs> Daunted yeah. by a decision. Yeah. I think th so. Universal respect is the other option. Yeah. I think I would pick sure. that because I think when I think of power, I, I don't know why, but like Trump came to mind and like, yes, he held power as president, but like no one respected him. Mm. Some people did, well, but yeah. a lot a of people didn't. <laughs> So, I, yeah, I think I would put, pick universal respect. Universal for respect. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think the only <clears throat> uh, the only scenario I'd want universal power is if it, or sorry, unlimited power and universal power. Oh, did I say universal? Yeah, I meant unlimited I think, power. Yeah, versus yeah. universal respect. A lot of U words in this one. Mm -hmm. um, is it, again, just to be able to, like, help mankind? Like, sure. Oh, d eliminate world hunger. Uh, yeah. Eliminate 
cancer yeah, uh, and all types of disease. That's like, true. Like, if I had that kind of power, then absolutely I and would want to do that. And with that would come respect. And also with that would come, you'd have to worry about, like, if you're solving world hunger, where's the food coming from? Are you, like, reducing the world's food stash oh, earlier? Yeah. Are we going to run out of food sooner? Like, you've got to think about all these... <laughs> Debbie Downer Gavin has entered the chair. <laughs> right, if you could just, just magic kidding, through right. it out of nowhere, then do it. If yeah. you could, yeah, if you could magic it into sure. existence, then absolutely. If my decisions yeah. didn't have colossal worldwide ramifications, <laughs> then sure. Yeah. Breaking news. World hunger comes to an end. <laughs> Catastrophic uh, climate change yeah. happening because all of our forestry <laughs> and everything has been completely God. depleted. Um yeah, I get that though. Yeah, we Universal humans respect. just suck sometimes. We, we sure just, do. We can't, we're we're having a hard time making it all work. We I just don't have a hard time. And do you guys ever think about? Sometimes I get into these like very um, deep moments of thought when I think about, oh, surely someone will fix this, or surely <laughs> people will figure this out. And I'm like, could you imagine being a person who is one of the people responsible for figuring that shit out? I guess. Like climate change. Uh, Mm-hmm. Scientists got they got to figure that shit out. Yeah. I think they have figured it out, but no one's yeah. freaking yeah. listening. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or just I don't know. No, yeah, absolutely. Think about those people things. who are in tech and medicine and all those industries where they're like figuring out ways to make the human existence better, or like you know they just developed a potential vaccine for uh, cancers and heart yep. disease, and it's like yep. how do people figure that shit out? Will you be bummed if they figure out? The cure to aging right after we die. We won't know, will we? I like don't it, think I would. <laughs> like I if it was like a thousand years from now, you'd be like, okay, well, that makes sense. But if it was yeah. like like six years after you died, would you be like, oh, God damn it. Yeah, I'd probably <laughs> not be too pleased about it. <laughs> when you say that, how many years? Like, what does that mean? Like a, a few extra years to your life? Or we're immortal? Or like you would never like look old? Um. Yeah, I, I guess like... You, Put some more say, thought say into the, your question before you ask it. Okay, sorry. What if the, <laughs> what if, sassy today. What if the, this is what it always like. <laughs> uh, say the human lifespan was increased to 400 years. Mm. Mm. And you would look like your 30s for like a century. Oh, man. So I watch a lot of vampire shows. So I would like that. You would? Okay. I, w- I think I would. But it's hard to say because I've only lived 34 years. <clears throat> and in my mindset now, I'm like, I want to live forever. I never want to die. That's terrifying. But maybe when I'm like 94, I'm going to be like, I've had enough of this shit. Yeah. Like, that's what that I worry about. It up. Is that because you're like old and haggard or is it just because you're done? That's, that's very true. Yeah. If you were, you looked young and were healthy and had like the inner workings of a healthy 30 something. <laughs> yeah. <you're> like, yeah. <laughs> inner workings. <laughs> uh, then maybe you'd be more inclined to want to spend more time around. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You said you've been watching vampire stuff and that. Yeah, one of the common themes in all the vampire things that I watch is that they're like, I've been around for too long. I want, I want to die, but they can't because they're immortal. Mm. Um, But four hundred years, I think, might be a little too long. Maybe if it was an additional hundred, I would probably do it. Do you think double it? That there, yeah. Well, double it or give it to the next person. Yeah. Um, Do you think that? There has been someone who is currently alive who has been born, whether it was like yesterday or like five years ago, who's going to live past 200? Probably not yet. Not, not yet. Yeah, I, don't, I, th- yeah. I think it'll happen. Mm-hmm. I think at some point mm-hmm. humanity will develop something that could prolong life a little oh, bit Oh, and then all the cloning. We're getting into like cloning just like organs if you need a new liver or whatever. <sighs> like it's getting, it's getting wild out there. Yeah. It's just crazy to think about. That baby will probably be born soon. One that will live to be 200. Yeah. God. Because what's the oldest person right now has lived to be? Was it like 130, 120? Who knows that information? That'll be in my internet search history. Yeah. Yeah, Starting think... now. Let me see. Some people have lived to, to like oldest mid 120s though, I think. Mm-hmm. That was my first guess was like a 120 or something. But That's a huge risk though. You're at risk of having uh, being alive while your kid dies of old age, which sure. I think is a bit weird. Sure. Yeah. Um, it looks like 122 hmm. years old is the longest a human has ever lived. And at that point, when you are that wow. age, I mean, aren't you like half blind? You can't hear. You're kind of like, like, what does your quality of life look it like? Depends. I mean, you are just yeah. a, you, you are a raisin that was raisined <laughs> <Yeah>. at that <laughs> point. <Yes. laughs> like whatever process of yes. having a raisin become a raisin that yeah. has happened twice to you. Yeah. Must be crazy turning like 92 and being like, oh, I'll do another 30 years. Wow. 
Bro- seriously. <laughs> I'm in my oh. uh, one eighth quarter life crisis, whatever it is. God. That's insane. Uh, all right. Last would you rather question. Would you rather be the funniest person in a room or the smartest person in a room? Ah, smartest. Funniest. You said smartest, smartest and you said funniest? Ooh. What about you? I don't know. Funniest, I think. Okay. I think yeah. because people like being around funny people. And I think there is a lot of value to being a, a very smart person and like having mm-hmm. people go to you for advice or like mm-hmm. trust what you're saying. But in terms of like people having a good time and enjoying each other's company, mm-hmm. like I think all my friends are hilarious and that's why I hang out with them. That's why I pick smartest because I'm already funny right now. So I'm like, <laughs> I'll just pick smartest because I'm kind of lacking in the smart department. So yeah, me too. I just haven't but. found a feeling better than making people laugh right, in my whole life. That's a nice, that's a, that's a nice thing to say. Yeah, that is very true. I'm not saying that I'm overly funny, but when you get like someone yeah. that lands in a room and everyone's cracking up, it's like, pfft. Yeah, that's one of the best. That's <laughs> there have been times, admittedly, um, where if I, I said something that got like a really good reaction or like a big laugh on a show, I'll go and like rewatch it a few times yeah. just to like relive that moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like the thing rewind I rewind ten seconds. Oh yeah. Rewind yeah. ten and seconds. Then you see oh, yeah. laugh and it's like, <laughs> like the thing I bring up all the time with you is when you walked in as a slut. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, I just think that's last the, laugh. Yeah, it's the funniest thing ever to me. Without context, that is such a funny thing for you to say right now. <laughs> yeah. Walked it, it, in it as, a slut. as a slut. <laughs> Last laugh season one, I came in uh, with the word slut written on my forehead. If you and, haven't seen season one, it's great. And my makeup running down my face. And then I just... With no smile on her face, just walks in deadpan, slut, written across her face, and then pads for period time on her hair. Yeah. And I got just Gus clustered. out immediately in his, in his talk, <laughs> Talking Head interview. He said that he laughed because I came in as something that they were all thinking about me already. <laughs> and I went, thank you, Gus. Stop it. <laughs> I don't remember that part. That's great. So funniest, smartest. I think funniest. I went smartest for for real because I've been learning a lot and uh, just about myself. And even in the question before that respect means a lot to me. Like mm. the minute I feel disrespected, I'm like somewhat triggered. Granted, every human deserves respect, but for some reason it means a lot more to me and I don't know why. So for for me picking smartest, I was just like, smart people comes with respect. Yeah. So I want that. That's true. Do you think I respect you? Sometimes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, I do. I think oh. so. I think. Should we need to talk some stuff out? <laughs> I think. <laughs> we haven't had drinks in a while. We'll, we'll yeah. I know, yeah. yeah. A lot of, lot of <clears throat> pent-up sassiness <clears throat> coming out. Who is the, the, would you say, the smartest person you know? If you could think about it. So there's a mixture. When I think of smart, I, the, you know, there's there's book smart where you're just like, okay, you're somebody that just knows a lot of facts mm-hmm. and you've read a lot of books. And while that is great, there's also that mixture of like, you've taken your learnings and you've put them to use over the years and you've like lived life and you just have overall wisdom. Mm. And I probably would say my dad mm. because boy, he's, I mean, he's the CEO of a global company and just like the, sh- the stories and the shit that he's gone through and learned about people. He's traveled the world and talked to people that are diff- very different than him. Sure. I don't know. He's taken all that learnings and he's just like, it's great. He's probably the smartest person I know. Your dad. Yeah. How about yeah. you, Gav? I feel like I know some YouTube people who are really smart. Oh, yeah. That guy, uh, is it Destin? Dustin? He's pretty smart. Yeah. He's getting smart every day. It, that's the name of his channel, <laughs> yeah. right? I was about to be like, it's something every day. Yeah. He's smarter every day. Yeah, just everyone in that. I always feel like an imposter when I get invited to events mm. with all those people. And I really like those people and we get on, but I'm just like. Just because they're like so smart. They're like, like actually so they have degrees and study things and stuff. I don't know if I could name the smartest person I know, but I feel like whenever, like if it's not my dad or my mom who I go to for like life advice, mm-hmm. I feel like I go to Gus. Okay. Gus Arola. Smart. Yeah. I feel like he just knows a lot about a lot of things. Yeah. Um, that isn't necessarily like, I don't care about. Who was the president? In That's what I mean. Nineteen twenty-two, exactly. Like, stuff like that, I don't care about. But like, mm-hmm. hey, my fridge is making this weird noise. Do you know yeah. what that? Or like, yeah. do you know anybody who might be able to repair this thing? Yeah. Or I yeah. don't know. I feel like Gus has a really good yes breadth of knowledge. He's a he's a wisdom type character. Also, I yeah. see Gus in that light. And we get the double whammy that we're like in the place that he spent so much of his time. Yeah. Because he has all like life wisdom and he also has all this local wisdom too. So it's, it's true. true. Mm-hmm. We're all here in Austin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know he has good advice. I feel like Jeff does too. <clears throat> Jeff Ramsey. Yeah. Those old old mm-hmm. Austin men. Just been around. They've been through some shit. What about the funniest person you know? God. That's that's a hard one. 
J- because, especially because we know so many funny yeah. people. I think one of the most naturally funny people is Charlotte Avery. God, she, in Fun House. she really is. Everything that comes out of her mouth, I'm constantly laughing at. It's uh, She just, it's effortless. It really is. It, it is. And uh, James and Elise, too, are also. I was going to yeah. say the Willemses, because the they, they're both. <laughs> insane. <laughs> crack me up. It fucking kills me. You know, do you remember Dax Stringer? Mm-hmm. He worked on a couple productions with us over yeah. the years. And I think, yeah, primarily as an AD, there are some people that like, they might not say joke after joke, but just the way that they are, their whole energy about them. He is somebody that like, we could be like in the trenches on set and just be going through it. And he will just make us laugh. If, like if Save Rance is the director, will be like, we need to do one more shot. He'll be like, oh boy, okay, Jesus Christ, fucking kill me now. <laughs> it is just like that type of thing. <laughs> Where you're just like... But he says it in such a jovial manner. Exactly. And so he's just like a happy-go-lucky guy, even though he's just like, I'm fucking dying inside. Yep. I had the worst Would You Rather that I presented to some people I was playing games with the other day. Oh, please. I realized it was more of a million dollars, but but I phrased it as a Would You Rather. (laughs) I said, said, Would You Rather Have a Million Dollars or a Year-Long Nosebleed? (laughs) Oh, my God. uh, Probably the million dollars. Yeah, probably the million dollars. But, uh, like, would you, for a million dollars, have yeah, a year long? That's what I meant. How much blood? Yeah. Uh, you Let's say, like, four pints a day. I don't know what that means. Four like, four of those? Four pints a day? Yeah. No, it, 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 won't, it won't kill you. Like no. it's, but it's just, like, kind of tri- yeah, just trickling like, out yeah. for a year? <laughs> nah. Okay. I'm good. Six months, maybe. Oh, six months? I Maybe, yeah. I think so. Mm, a million dollar loan money. <laughs> <laughs> that's, life, that's life-changing it money for a, a pretty big inconvenience, but you'd still be able to do... Your lips would be stained after a while, just constant red lipstick. <laughs> just right here. Just, yeah, just like... <laughs> but like not quite on the lip, just above yeah. it. <laughs> oh, man. That's a good one. I after a while, it like makes you crazy, so you start using it as clown makeup. You start spreading it across your face. and I don't know. I, th- I feel like things would get real weird for me. You would go very like... <laughs> Have you seen Yellow Jackets? Yes. You would go very like <laughs> cheerleader stuck in the woods, Damn. Yellow Jacket. Damn. You wouldn't be able to wear any of your clothes for a year. You would just bleed all you over. You could wear black and red. Yeah, you could. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but or you, if you found something, put tampons up there. Yeah, I love sticking tampons up my nose. Would that stop it though? Or would it just start to like backflow? They would absorb it. Okay. Although, but then they would expand and make your, no- your probably your nose would probably like grow. I'd be fine. I'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Something too I wanted to bring up with you, Gavin. Um, I listen to Fuckface sometimes, yeah. which is Bleatface. Sorry, yeah. um, which is a podcast that Gavin uh, is part of. Very funny podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, they did this thing uh, a little while back called the Mall Draft, where <laughs> they each picked I think it was four different things to have in a mall to four, make like four stores basically, or or like. I don't know if a escalator well wow. a store um, <laughs> or a car that you could win. We, uh, we went off the rails for yeah. sure. Okay. And I just thought it was so interesting. Uh-huh. So I'm curious, Jessica, what would be like four of your ideal stores in a mall? Because all of your options were dog shit. Every <laughs> single one. Mean? Every <laughs> single one was dog shit. You guys are not thinking about the uh, most... Uh, Likely customer at a mall, the teenage girl. Oh, God. She could go into Greg's and get a lovely sausage roll. What are you talking about? <laughs> and then take the escalator to nowhere. <laughs> what is Greg's? Is this a UK thing? It's yeah. a UK thing. Okay. Yeah. Big time. And then, what was it? Uh, Kmart? No. Uh, TK Maxx? TK Maxx. Oh, my God. Which is not T... It is TJ yeah. Maxx, but it's TK Maxx in the UK. Yeah. There's apparently another store in the UK called TJ something. It co- confused me when I was there. I was like, what the fuck is this place? <laughs> That's a that's a good question because when I went to the mall, it was mainly to like try and meet boys. So definitely mm. a water fountain, which is a, is I think Nick. I think Nick picked the fountain. The fountain, the big okay. fountain, because that's where like the congregation would kind of happen. Yeah, it was around there. Um, I was between Eric's and Nick's mall. I think that they had some good options. I have to think back to the stores because when I think about being a teenage girl back when I was younger, it was like limited to mm. all those little things. So I'm thinking nowadays, like Forever Twenty One, for sure. That's a huge one. Like you got. A lot of people coming for the Forever 21 or yeah. H&M. Yes, I would definitely pick H&M yeah. for myself, actually. Sometimes I still shop there. Even that's a no-no store, apparently. <laughs> because they do fast fashion. And oh, I don't shit. know. I don't know. There's so many I things. I a lot of stores do nowadays. I can't keep up. I need to buy clothes somewhere. The Annie M's was a good one. <laughs> the, oh, yeah. The pretzel pretzels, place. For sure. Um, and then a massage place. Ooh, that would have been a good one. 
little, little spa, mall's massage. Do you Even have though the mall for that? I've never gone a, mas- a proper massage at a mall before, but I've sat in the chairs before. Have you ever done the airport one? Yeah, I have actually. I've never done that. It's. I don't like that everyone could just look at you. <laughs> it is yeah, weird. But you're, you're looking down. And it's mostly like in places people are walking by anyway, so no one's kind of like sitting watching you. Do you think someone's just going to stand there, watch somebody rub you and just like... I don't think they'll be masturbating at the airport. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I I don't know what you said. Because mine just goes. But that's what you said. You were like, who, who did You thought it was weird? Someone thought well, it was I weird. Think, I think it's like if... It is weird to think about someone watching you get a massage. I get, but yes. not in a sexual way, just in a like. It could be. I just feel like it's it's. Oh, I need to talk in the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's quite an intimate thing. It's okay, very intimate. which brings up another conversation. When we did the one of the last RT podcasts I did before the switchover was, would you get a massage from your friend versus a, a stranger at a place i'd rather it be a stranger me too and i think we agreed on the same thing stranger, yeah i don't want friend i don't want someone i know like touching my inner thigh <laughs> well, yeah <laughs> or like just <laughs> sensually rubbing me which is weird to say like i'd rather have a stranger do that to me because it's so just like black and white transactional i actually have started so i get a massage um i have like a subscription at a place where i get one once a month mm-hmm. um yeah. which i is that sounds great it's yeah. great because i'm a tense motherfucker all the time <laughs> yeah. um I actually have a guy, a male masseuse, do me. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it's, he's really good. Is he hot though? No. See, I went to one once and he was hot and then it, the entire experience was ruined for me because really? I was like- I think I would enjoy that though. But I was Although like- Although you get self-conscious and stuff? I think, I don't know what it was, but I was like, this guy's, is, this guy's hot. He's, I, I don't know, it was weird. Me and Trevor once got <laughs> massages at the same time, not like a couple's massage, but just we both had massages at the same time. So like you go into your separate rooms and stuff like that. Okay. And he had a guy masseuse and I had a female masseuse. And he was saying that like after that, he's he's like, I think I realized that from now on, I only want fem- female masseuses. And I was like, oh, why? He's like, it was fine. It just, every now and then he would do something and I would feel all his arm hairs. <laughs> <laughs> like on me and i was like okay yeah that okay. might be hey, <laughs> strange you know? maybe he just needs a waxed man yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. strong hands you know thank you for bringing in more options yeah <laughs> yeah, <sounds Yes>. <laughs> yeah jeff jeff talked about how he only wants to be rubbed by guys because uh, they're just like just powerful hands mm-hmm. yeah i mean mm-hmm. there's a lot of women masseuse who mm-hmm. have a very i i had one grip. in japan this sort of must be 50 year old tiny Japanese r- woman who just rocked my shit. She <laughs> messed. It was so painful. Oh, it no. was. She was so strong. Like deep tissue. <laughs> oh, God. In. Yeah, like elbows too. It's like she just beat the shit out of me. Did you feel good after or was no, it one of those like. Actually, the next day, but like that evening, I was like, ow. <laughs> my, the first ever massage I got, I didn't know what anything meant. So okay. they're like deep tissue. And at first I was thinking like, oh, that'll really get like get in there. Yeah. Not thinking like, oh, deep tissue is going to hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, it hurt so fucking bad. And I was too <laughs> shy to say anything about it because yeah. like, I was like 18 yeah. or 19. Um, I got actually physically sick the next day <laughs> because they like massage me so hard that it releases all like, the lactic acid yes. and stuff. And I didn't know to like have to drink, drink water mm-hmm. and like do all that shit after a massage. So like, I was literally, I had the shakes the next day and I was like, I feel like, like shit. I'm sick to my stomach. Like what is going That's on? Insane. I'm never getting a massage again. You got oh like my skin God. poisoning from it. <laughs> I don't even know what happened. God, it was that's just a crazy. bad experience. Yeah, they hurt really bad. I've only gotten one once and I was like moving off the table. He's like, please stay still. I'm like, I, you're abusing me. I can't. I know. It's just, you're rocking my world and I can't handle it. I always feel bad saying it's too hard or to anything. I just go with whatever they're giving me. I've started to speak up now just because I'm like, I'm paying for this and I want this to be good. And See, I, I, I need to be happy. I spoke up once and it went really bad for me. Why? How? Why? Because it was, it was like really, this was a different person, but okay. it was too hard. <laughs> no, and they were like, how's the pressure? And I was like, probably not harder than that. And she was like, harder than that? Got it. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> well, to be fair, you worded it in the weirdest I know, I, way. I was like, oh, why did I open my stupid I guess, mouth? how do you, like, would you would you just be like, maybe a little less? Yeah, I could like, have worked it. Because, like, it's easier to go like, oh, you could go a little harder. Look, that's easy to say. Yeah. yeah. But if someone needs to tone it down. I think I've said before, I'm like, can you just go a little softer? Softer. Mm-hmm. That works. I've never yeah. been one for wording things right. <laughs> <laughs> Especially not while your face is in a pillow yeah. like this. <laughs> while they're trying to give you some relief this episode of always open is brought to you by factor thank you factor for helping make this show possible 
With the busy fall season right around the corner, I find myself having less and less time to spend preparing quality meals for myself in the kitchen, especially after a long day of work or running errands. I know I'm guilty of letting my grand cooking plans go and opting for junk food as an easy alternative, as I'm sure many of you are. Well, thankfully, Factor, which happens to be America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. It seriously saves me so much time. I cannot stress that enough. Their fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. There's no prep, no mess. All you have to do is heat and enjoy. There's over 34 meal options to choose from weekly and Factor also has dozens of add-ons like breakfast items and beverage options like cold pressed juices, shakes, smoothies, you name it. I have been loving the calorie smart meal plans, specifically the shredded chicken taco bowl. All the meals in this plan are delicious. I've tried various ones, but I really like this one because it's easy to keep my calories in check and know exactly what I'm getting and exactly what I'm eating. And it's just so easy. Again, guys, two minutes. It takes me two minutes to prepare this delicious, healthy meal that's ready to go. No mess. You just toss it and you're done. So head to factormeals.com slash open50 and use the code open50 to get 50% off. That's code open50 at factormeals.com slash open50 to get 50% off. Enjoy your meals, guys. This episode of Always Open is also brought to you by Shady Rays. We have officially reached the point in the year where you pretty much need sunglasses every time you step outside. I feel like in Austin, that's every day. But it seems like my sunglasses always get stuck in my hair, and if I try to put my sunglasses on top of my head, I wind up with this tangled, jumbled mess of hair and possibly a chunk of hair missing when I go to take them out. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Well, thankfully, our friends at Shady Rays have new tangle-free aviators that have a patent-pending nose piece that they designed specifically to avoid tangling. Thank you. These are the tangle-free aviators. You can see they're on my head right now, on my face, on my head, on my face. Look, they don't tangle at all. They don't even pull any hair with them. They're stylish. They're beautiful. I also have this pair right here that I love. You can't tell. They look like high-end sunglasses, and they're such great quality love them. Plus, if you lose or break your sunglasses, even on day one, Shady Rays will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Yes, that's right, best deal of the season. Head to shadyrays.com slash tanglefree and use the code OPEN for 30% off their best-selling tangle-free aviators and much more, just like these. Save before they sell out and try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Plus, you just look cool. All right. Well, thank you for uh, indulging me in those. Yeah. Uh, let's get to our question for the show. Uh, these are questions that y'all have sent into our email, which is always open at roosterteeth.com. Please send us your questions. We'd love to hear from you and uh, discuss your question on the show with our guests. So this is our first one. Mm -hmm. Recently, a close friend of mine has rekindled his relationship with a former partner. For context, the two dated for a little over a year and broke up about four to five years ago when we were in our early 20s. This partner was incredibly toxic during their relationship, accused my friend of cheating, which I know to be a lie, and made other offensive and abusive comments. Fast forward to now, and this partner reached out to my friend after his recent breakup. I expressed some concern when he told me they'd been chatting, but he assured me that he was just doing it for fun. His ex is buying him things, taking him places, and has apparently made several changes to his lifestyle. My friend initially said that he had no intention of dating this person again, but they're spending all their free time together, calling each other babe, and behaving like they're in a relationship. I know it's none of my business, and I have no intention of telling my friend who he can and can't hang out with. It's entirely possible that this person has changed in the time they've spent apart, but my opinion on them hasn't. I won't stop my friend from enjoying himself, and if this is something he wants, I'm happy for him. However, I also can't pretend to like this person. I still see subtle signs of immaturity in his behavior. My friend and I live together, so I'm seeing this person all the time, and I'm forced to be in close proximity to them. Any thoughts on how I should act moving forward, or how you would handle, or have handled, a similar situation? This is complex. They're complex. Damn. Yeah. So, so a lot of layers here. Two people were dating, didn't have a great relationship, <clears throat> early 20s, broke up for four to five years, and then now are potentially getting back together. Mm. Have you guys ever been in a situation like this? 
I've definitely like broken up with someone and got yeah. back together. Yeah, you have. I have, and uh, it was actually the person right before Devin, who I am now engaged to. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, we broke up. He broke up with me. I was like devastated, um, and then he was like, "I need some space," and so that's. But but also break up space. He's like, "We mm. may get back together, we may not," and I was like, "No, stop! I love you. I want to be together." Broke up for three months, and I did a lot of really great like self-healing during that time okay. and started to be okay without him and worked on all of my kind of struggles at the time is it because you were hanging out at the fountain the fountain <laughs> i met i met some other people there mm. and i was eating a lot of pretzels but not the gregs that's the problem <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then uh he entered back in and was like i want to be with you again and then mm. i was like oh okay and then when we i said of course i said yes but as we started dating again I realized something fell off and felt a little icky. Fast forward six months, and then I made the decision to break up with him mm. because I was like, this just doesn't so work he, anymore. He broke up with you first? Yeah. And then you got back together eventually. After and then three you, months. You broke up with him. Yeah. How'd he take that? Uh, he was like sad about it. Uh, it was very interesting. It was, I keep thinking of the word power right now and just yeah. like this weird power dynamic and like, I don't know. He didn't like it and was confused by it, but I was like, no. And then uh, I, it was, it felt good to break up with him. I don't know. Something had those three months. I it was a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Well, it kind of um, opens your eyes to yeah. uh, what life is like not being with that person. Yeah. How long were they? They were it years. Said, they were. They dated for a year and broke up four to five years ago. So let's say they dated from like twenty to twenty one, broke up, and now they're like twenty six. I am a big proponent that people do grow and change. People do change. And I, I don't know if this person has had a conversation with them before, but I think like having one of those heart to hearts where it's like explaining like, I'm happy if you're happy that they're back in your life and I'm trusting you that they are, they have changed. Keep in mind, I own, the, the reason I'm having this conversation with you is because I want what's best for you and I care about you. Yeah. But um, I've noticed some of these tendencies, but if, if you're saying that they have changed and this is what makes you happy now, that I'm going, that I'm going to support you. Mm. But um I'm here for you to talk. I don't know. It's it's one of those weird things. I've been I've had a really good friend of mine where her partner did cheat on her, mm. and I knew it for a fact. I went and told her. She chose to believe him. Oh god! And I That's had rough. it. It was very hard, and I made the decision of this is the man that she wants to be with, and she is now married to him. I think he has changed and grown and everything. Um, but it, it was like I I support her, and as long as he's not abusing or hurting her, and she just wants to live in bliss, and he's not doing it again. Okay. Yeah. I think the thing about this situation that gets me is it'd be one thing if it was just like a bad relationship mm -hmm. and like they didn't get along and fought a lot or whatever. But the fact that this person had made like offensive comments and abusive comments and claimed that they were cheating on them when they weren't, it seems like some very toxic behavior. Mm -hmm. But again, in your early 20s, you are a different person from your late 20s. And I have in my early 20s, some of the things that I have said to to the boyfriends I had then were not great. Same. I have absolutely said some horrible things. Oh, um, shit. Poo head, oh, yeah. poo face and stuff. I said those things, exactly. <laughs> I was like, you're poo -poo a fucking poo-poo head. Yeah. yeah. Poo-poo um, bladder. So, yeah, I don't, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. But I think keeping that those those <clears throat> open communications there with each other yeah. will help. What do you think, Gav? I'll let him do it. Yeah? I mean, I, don't, I, just, I just feel like I wouldn't get involved. Yeah. I, would, I would say some concerns, but... Uh, ultimately, they they want they want to try that again. Yeah, and uh, I think they'll figure out if it doesn't work. I think it's themselves. Pretty straightforward, right? In that sense. Of... Yeah, because because I understand, you know, it's it's easy to say, oh, I'll just let them do it. That's good that you also added that you would have a conversation with them because there's also like the battle of like, granted, everybody's going to do whatever they want to do, no matter what. You can't control another person, but you being a good friend to them and like letting them know the concerns that you have and talking to Yeah, I'd probably be like, look, I'm, I, I guess I'm in support of this, but remember, you know, remember these things, keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't forget the way they treated yeah. you and like, right. just, that recurs again, maybe cut yeah. it loose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd probably have a very quick conversation with them, just be like, hey, yeah. remember when this person <laughs> sucked? <laughs> yeah. If they don't suck anymore, cool, but if they start sucking again, maybe cut it. Yeah. Um, what about you? I, I, I would agree with that. I would mm -hmm. say like, you know, people do change, especially like four to five years, giving them time from your early 20s to your mid late 20s, you do become a very different person. And maybe they have changed and grown. Mm -hmm. And you do have to trust your friend to make the decisions that's right for them. Mm -hmm. I do agree with you, Jessica, of like, communicate and like, maybe check in every once in a mm -hmm. while. 
and make sure your friend know that he deserves to be happy and treated well. And if he's not getting that from this person, that he shouldn't waste his time. Yeah. It does complicate things, though, that they live together. Yeah. Him, the, the two friends. And so, like, you do have to see this person a lot and you already yeah. have this um, kind of interpretation of how you feel about them. Mm-hmm. Which I think is another very problematic thing that a lot of people deal with is is the confirmation bias of, I don't like this person, so yeah. I'm going to look for all the ways yes. and the reasons why I don't like this person. Yeah. Rather than like, let me try to like this person and look yep. for the ways that they, you know, exceed my expectations and do yeah. nice things or be a good person. Yeah, I'm absolutely a uh, victim of that. I think we all are. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's something I was going to say, and then I completely forgot. Yeah, I, I think I'd just make sure that the person I'm living with can only see my internet history and not my thoughts. <laughs> God. Jeez. Awful. <laughs> How to make friend break up with toxic <laughs> eggs. <laughs> but yeah, I, I would agree. I think we're yeah. on the same page about that. Yeah. Um, yeah just, just be there for your friend. Mm-hmm. I think don't try to control them, but just know mm-hmm. that you are there for them and want to protect them. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. I think we'd get to another question real quick. Yeah, let's do you it. You guys are cool with it? Yeah. All right. So this one reads, I, 26-year-old male, have just learned that my brother, 29 male, is pregnant. And what I mean by that is that my brother is a trans man. I currently live with him and his boyfriend in a one-bedroom apartment, uh, them in the bedroom and me on the couch. We do have plans on getting a two-bedroom apartment so I could get my own space. My immediate thought was that they were going to have me look for my own place when the baby comes. But when I voiced my fear, they quickly assured me that was not happening. And then my second thought was that my brother has already accomplished so much more than me, and I kept that thought to myself. He has completed wielding school, is in a healthy, loving relationship with his boyfriend, and always does the things that he sets his mind to. Where with me, I have dropped out of college, have only been in one relationship that lasted less than a month, had all my friends drop me when I started getting depressed. I did a complete data analysis course, however. I can't get a job in my field at all. My, bro- my brother has created a mark in his life where I just exist, and I just don't know how to deal with it. How do I stop the feeling of being left behind and try to be happy for my brother? So basically, to distill this information, mm-hmm. um, it sounds like he, uh, he lives with his brother, mm-hmm. who is in a relationship and is going to be having a baby with this person. Mm-hmm. His brother has accomplished a lot, very successful, mm-hmm. is happy, whereas he lives with him, sleeping on the couch, can't really get a job, is not in a relationship, is depressed, feels like he has not left his mark on the world. Mm-hmm. So a lot going on in this mm-hmm. question. Mm-hmm. Do you have to leave a mark on the world? Is that everyone's goal? Absolutely not. I don't think <laughs> at any point that's that should be the aim. Can I say something? Please. That, I agree with that 100%. There is a part of me that feels like when, and you are two people that have absolutely made your marks. They might not be like huge as far as, you know, you'll be written down in history books, but you are two people that have made your mark. Do you think that's a little bit easier for you to say versus somebody that has not done anything? I mean, it it, it might be. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be, um, you know, unaware of the fact that that might be true. Mm-hmm. But I've always been very adamant that nothing really matters. Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> because like, we're all going to be dust at the end of the day. And also mm-hmm. a mark is just, I don't know, there's different there is definitions different of that. Like I, I look at my the people in my family who've got, had kids already. And I'm like, man, they're way ahead of me in that. But it's like, yeah. but is that what, why are we competing? And like, mm-hmm. what, what is the mark? And I don't How, know. I how just does feel that like, change anything about your happiness and, mm-hmm. and your story? Yeah. I, I feel like it's, everything's a lot, a lot easier when you just worry about where you're up to in comparison to the, I guess the goals that you have for yourself. But right. when you compare it to other people, it just gets, you're never going to be satisfied. Mm-hmm. Right. And in my opinion, I think the the best mark you could leave on the world is just by being a good person mm-hmm. and by being good to other people and, and doing good where you can, whether that yep. be donating to charity or, mm-hmm. you know, like helping out someone who, who needs assistance in something, you know, mm-hmm. just being there for your friends, being a nice person to yep. waiters at a restaurant, you know, yeah. like or a skydiving accident would leave a mark. Probably. <laughs> a permanent, a very permanent. Mark. Well, yeah, <laughs> if you want a great advice, Gavin. Shit, but I do think a lot of people put pressure on themselves to <clears throat> yep. accomplish things, to leave a mark on the world for whatever that means to them, mm-hmm. um, and it ultimately you'll have a hard time living up to that expectation for yourself that you might just find 
you're disappointing yourself. How old are they again? Like 22? <sighs> 26. 26. And his okay. brother's 29. Yeah. That's such a hard lesson to learn too. And I feel like we're in our thirties and I'm just now getting that. Mm. And it's so, it's so interesting to live in the world of like, we are dust to believe that, know that that's true and real, but yet it's not necessarily a part of our like day to day mundane tasks that we have to do where I can't always remind myself, but I'm just dust because I live right here right now where sure. make the most of democracy, it. capitalism. So it's just so hard to like think that way. But I think like, my advice to him, because sometimes, and we talk a lot about mental health in this podcast, mm -hmm. is sometimes, you know, your chemicals are just a little bit weird up in the head. We're, we all have that to where you it's hard to get out of that negative thinking or thinking like, I'm nothing, I'm worthless, like, w I wish I could do something more. So definitely having somebody to talk to about those things. So whether that's a therapist or somebody that you really trust, you can talk to. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but then it's like one step at a time, if anything, because it's so hard to just have this giant burden on you where you're like, I have to do so many things. I need to get married. I need to have kids. I need to have a stellar career. When really like, it's just one thing at a time. We're just like, what do you want? Yeah. Do you want to have a happy? kid? Yeah. Do you want to live in a place where you are comfortable but have a job that maybe doesn't pay that much but you're still happy? Like, And it sounds like what he's comparing himself to is just uh, his brother who is just – has a family and is going to have a kid and just finished school. So those are really – you know, it's not like this big – you're not like an A-list actor type situation. They're very right. just like – I mean, honestly, most, some of the happiest people I've ever met have never left a tr traditional, like, mm -hmm. career-based mark anywhere. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And they're just, like, amazing, yeah. funny people who just didn't really... W one of the best things that you ever told me was after the RTX event, and then Mariel's thing went around, and you told me, you asked me, you're like, what would you do if something happened to this? Oh, yeah. And I rambled. I just remember rambling to you. And I'm like, oh, I'd probably do blah, blah, blah. And then I asked you and you were just so calm, so, so chill. And you're like, I don't know. I just want to be happy. Like, I don't really, I <laughs> yeah. just want really to be happy. It. Like, it, was a, it was incredible, Barb. <laughs> I, as long as I'm in a place where I could support the things I want to do yeah. and be happy, I'm good. Yeah. We don't like, need to do anything super big. And then Mariel's little bit from the RT podcast, or um, <laughs> Always Open came out where she's just like, I just want a job that I can do that's not stressful, and then I live my life and yeah. travel the world. And well, that's she really it. she was talking about how like she used to have her dream job, and now she realized her dream is to not work. Yeah, well, yes, <laughs> I'm like so relatable. I don't think anyone, yeah, dreams of no labor, one dreams of labor, yeah. Um, but but I think also some maybe advice I would go for in this question is I don't know if necessarily living with your brother when he's about to start this new family is necessarily the greatest situation for you to be in. Like if if it's a situation where living together helps you and like so helps support you and you guys are happy and it's working out, then great. But I do feel like living with someone else and being surrounded by what they have going on and their big life changes might keep you from branching out a little bit. Or so, sleeping. Or sleeping. Yeah, I don't know if sleeping on a couch is necessarily like the best situation for your mental health or and a screaming physical baby. health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I didn't even think about yeah. that. Being around a newborn a baby, it's gonna be up all night. You have to breastfeed yeah. it. So many things. <laughs> I don't think I want kids. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's a whole nother discussion, <laughs> another discussion, another conversation. Talk about on a lot of episodes uh, here. But yeah, um, no, that's some solid advice. But the the feeling of being left behind and trying to be happy for your brother, which is what he kind of ends the question with, um, is a construct. It's a construct. I, I think obviously being happy for your brother is an important situation because he is going through this big time in his life. And I don't think that being happy for him or celebrating his successes and victories is going to take anything away from you. There's a saying that is um, comparison is the thief of joy, mm -hmm. which is one of them. Mm -hmm. But also like someone's success, someone's beauty, someone's whatever it is, is not the absence of your own. Mm -hmm. So just because someone else is succeeding or someone else is really happy does not mean you can't have that mm -hmm. or you can't be that way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, yep. Yeah, I, I feel like I found little nuggets of happiness in stuff that no one would ever notice. Just yeah. like finding a new hobby or just like getting excited and like researching something and like getting into something that I've never done before. And that's not doing anything for anyone apart from <laughs> exactly. me. But it's just like, ooh. Just for you. Got a new thing. Just do things that make you happy. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I've been playing The Sims again. Hey. Which God. is making me really happy. But something that I enjoy is just, like, finding things to download for my game. Like, there little mods. Yeah. When is Sims 5 coming out? Gavin, 
I don't know. <laughs> Not soon enough. I've been waiting someday. But yeah, again, like stop putting so much pressure on yourself. Find something that makes you happy and don't allow other people's accomplishments, success, milestones make you feel like you are any less than or like you need to achieve this or you're in some type of life race to get to that moment because your story is different than everyone else's. Yeah. And you're probably also much cooler than anyone who's left a dent, to be honest. (laughs) Pretty much. That's true. But good luck. Thank you for the question. Thank you guys for answering those with me. Um, If you have a question for our show, as mentioned before, you could email that to alwaysopen at roosterteeth.com. I have a question. Yes. Do you make your Sims have sex still at 35 years old? 33 years old? Of course I do. 34. Great. 34. Okay. Absolutely. That's what I did all just constantly. Woohoo. Anyway, continue. (laughs) Make him him swim and then delete the ladders from the pool. (laughs) I also, (laughs) I don't do that as much anymore. (laughs) Just because now I'm just I'm too empathetic towards my sim. Make a room with no doors, a fireplace, and 16 wooden chairs. <laughs> we actually did a, a video during the pandemic um, when we were all like quarantining at home. Yeah. It was a race to death in The Sims. <laughs> so a great idea. It was me, Gus, Blaine, and Chris, oh, I believe. And we all had our own Sims game open. And it was like, all right, and go. And we tried to kill a family of four. <laughs> <laughs> who could do it the fastest oh one. This is a great outlet for those people that like could be murderers or have thoughts <laughs> of killing people. They should just play The Sims because sometimes there are people out like that. Or therapy. Just, yeah, well, some, <laughs> you know? yeah, that could <laughs> work too. Having those thoughts. That could work too. I don't know. Therapy might there's be a better outlet of, for that. There's lots of options yeah. is what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us today. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Gavin, good to have you back. Jessica, thank you for being here once again. <laughs> Gavin didn't shoot his pants. I have been clenched Are you the okay? whole time and Are I you feel serious? good. I feel fine. Okay, excellent. Well, that's good. It's that not, means it's yeah. not as liquidy anymore. This is I firming think that, up. that banana's taken hold. It did. Yes. From the home stretch. It's literally plugged you up. I'm corked. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you you all for watching this episode of always open if you like it please subscribe to wherever you get podcasts uh, whether that be spotify apple etc or here on youtube at all good no worries or on roosterteeth.com where you get episodes a day early uh, as well as tons of other stuff so become a first member to support this show as well as everything else we make at rooster teeth follow us on social and tune in for always open same place same time next week and we'll see you guys later bye <laughs>